You chose that. Yeah. You can tell. Day. Uh, oh, here comes Doris. <laughs> okay. It's good to see you all, and it's good to see everybody on Zoom. And we've we've seen you individually, and there's quite a lot of you, which is lovely. So we welcome Soba to our communion service today on this Palm Sunday. Thank you, Soba. We look forward to your message. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, very warm welcome to all of you to this act of worship. And uh, we have the privilege this morning of taking part in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, to which everyone is warmly invited. Uh, Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, all combined together on this uh, special Sunday. Um, as our period of Lent is coming to an end and the Holy Week is beginning, uh, we think about the life and particularly the end part of the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. On this occasion, uh, there are some palm crosses um, which will be distributed to you uh, later in the service. And please take one home and uh, keep it and uh, use it as a focal point for the remainder of this year until next year, perhaps. Um, thinking about the hosannas that the people shouted and that we are part of that uh, believing. Um, appreciating uh, people and so that is one thing and then also I want to invite you to join uh, with me um, towards the end uh, to say some responses, Lent responses. Perhaps I might have done it last month but uh, it's a little reminder for us that we are still in this uh, holy season of Lent and that we are thinking about the life and time and death and resurrection so in that response, we um, will remember and recollect uh, that Jesus died for us and uh, his death and resurrection is for us and for our sake and we are partakers in that. It will serve as a little reminder for us towards the end of the service. And a little uh, reminder for you also of um, some of the activities taking place during this week. Um, tomorrow is our quiet day. Um, we have a circuit quiet day, so we can expect a few more people from around the circuit coming to that, starting at 10 30 and finishing at 12 o'clock. Um, it is a simple act of uh, a personal reflection. Uh, people will have the freedom to come and go. Um, Whenever they like, you know, there is no fixed uh, timetable or anything, but there will be different stations um, around the church um, in the different uh, area where people can engage in different activities. Um, so that is tomorrow at the end of your course, sir, and you can help yourself at the PM during uh, the time. Lord's of Thursday is our morning Thursday service, and it is for us. And we have extended our invitation to our brothers and sisters in Moosley Church, and um, we can expect a few from uh, that church coming and joining us Thursday, seven o'clock, um, and we will have a light supper to start with, and then we join the community service afterwards. So two things locally, and of course next Sunday, special Sunday for us, as we commemorate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now let us bring all our thoughts together, reminding ourselves that we are indeed in the presence and surrounded by the presence of God, our Maker and our Maker. Let us pause for a moment, bringing all our thoughts together and prepare ourselves to offer our worship to God.
join in singing our praises and thanksgiving to God as we um, begin singing, You are the King of Glory. There will be um, another worship song, Make Way, Make Way, um, following that immediately. So we remain standing to sing those two worship songs. First, uh, okay, okay, great. That, that's fine. Okay, this morning a beautiful morning that you have given to us with 
a deep sense of thankfulness and praise to you, Father. Every time we come into your presence, we feel we are special because you have given us so many privileges in our lives. The greatest privilege of all is to know you as our Father and to be able to feel that we are part of your family. We are here, loving God to give you our thanks and praise in realization of all your goodness and mercies towards us. Day after day, time after time, you are filling our lives with your love and your mercies, Father, for all that we want to give you thanks. But a very well loving God, we give you our thanks and praise for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, in our lives. And especially as we go through this period of Lent, we think about his life, his death, and his resurrection, Father. For everything he has done on our behalf and for our sake, we want to give you our thanks and praise. And we thank you, Father, for the faith that you have instilled in our hearts and minds in and through your Son, Jesus Christ. And oftentimes we wonder how our lives would be without the faith that we have in you. And we also want to give you thanks, Father, for the gift of your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit in our lives, your Holy Spirit in our church, your Holy Spirit in our world, your Holy Spirit always leading us into all truths and urging and inspiring us continuously until we find our rest and peace in you. For all your wonderful gifts, we give you our thanks and praise. And we thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Because everything around us is changing. But you come to us as a changeless God with the same offer of love, grace, and forgiveness. For all your generosity, for all your continuous love and care, we give you our thanks and praise. Now, Father, we offer this time of worship in your hands as a token of our love and thankfulness and ask you to accept this time of worship, Father, and make it such a blessing for each one of us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And we remain seated and sing our next worship song, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe.
the scriptures. Philippians chapter 2, reading verses 5 to 11, which you'll find on page 1114. In your relationships with one another, have the same attitude of mind Christ Jesus had, who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human being, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and the glory of God the Father. And now from Luke's gospel, Luke 19, reading from verse 28 on page 995. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as a king. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked him, asked them, why are you untying the colt? They, repl they replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully in praise of, to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Thanks be to God.
We thank God for his words for us this morning and thank you to Dave for reading those words for us. Let us pray. Father, most holy and loving, we give you our thanks for your words for us this morning. Your words always giving us meaning and purpose for our lives. Now, as we hear your words and share them, we pray that you will speak to us, Father, in your spirit, so that our understanding of you will be broadened and our faith deepened. Speak to us now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The concluding part of our gospel reading passage says, I tell you, when the Pharisees called Jesus, um, saying, teacher, rebuke your disciples, Jesus replied, I tell you that if these should kept, keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. That explains the nature of that situation. It is estimated, a rough estimate, that during the temple festival time uh, during Passover, about three million people would come to Jerusalem. Three million people come to Jerusalem. About 256,000 lambs would be slaughtered. It is only a rough estimate from early records, but even if it is exaggerated, we can say and we can imagine easily, it's a big, big crowd of people. Even to this day, the Jewish people, if they don't have a chance to go to Jerusalem for the Passover celebrations, they would say from their own countries, wherever they were living at the time, they would say, this time here, next time in Jerusalem. It is a religious obligation and also a lifetime's ambition for every Jew to be able to go to Jerusalem for this festival. So that gives us some understanding how many people would have gathered there. And then the early part of this gospel story is inviting us to think about the kind of welcome and adulation Jesus received from these people, the local people, people from Bethany and Bethphage, that sort of area, after having seen and um, testified to the resurrection of Lazarus, Jesus bringing back to life his friend, Lazarus. And that is an unimaginable kind of miracle happening in their lifetime. So several people would have heard about these things and they wanted to see Jesus and they might have felt already, this is the one we have been expecting all our lives. The God, God's anointed one is among us. So when Jesus prepared to go on this donkey towards Jerusalem, people gathered together and gave him the kind of acclamation and welcome and appreciation that is fit only for a victorious king, thinking that he is the one who is going to deliver us from all the occupation of these Romans and is going to bring us freedom. That is why they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is save us, save us now. And that is setting the scene. It is not just an ordinary occasion. It is charged and filled with emotions. Emotions filled and packed in the air that you can feel. Jesus goes on this donkey quietly and silently, perhaps nodding and smiling and accepting all the cheers from the people. But at the same time, we can imagine what might have been going in his own heart at the time. Because his mind, we know from the gospel readings, 
is not on that alone. It is on what's going to happen next, what's going to be fulfilled in and through his life. That is what in his mind, but still the people giving this adulation and acclamation to Jesus, accepting that and going. And we, as people living 2,000 years after the life and death of Jesus Christ, can now put our minds to that kind of situation, imagine and tell us about the real glory of God, now shining in that humility of Jesus Christ, going on the donkey, humbly accepting the adulation of the people, and then going resolutely to, towards Jerusalem. No turning back, no questions asked. He is simply going towards Jerusalem to see what is ahead of him so that God's plan will be fulfilled in and through him. And that is why Paul says he was equal with God, but he never ever claimed that status, but he humbled his, himself to that the state of an, a servant, and he was obedient to the point of death so that God raised him, exalted him to the highest level that every name and every knee should bow at the name of Jesus Christ. This brings us back to the beginning of um, Lent period, how it all started for us. It is a journey for each one of us, not only for Jesus Christ, but for us as well. We were taken through this period of Lent on a journey. And the journey began with the temptation of Jesus Christ. And after the temptation, Jesus came into active ministry. And at the temptation, all sorts of opportunities to fame, popularity, and power were given to Jesus, and he denied and uh, he refused all of them. Why he refused all of them? That we have to ask ourselves. Because he didn't want to take things in his own hands and in his own way. He wanted to be obedient to the word of God. And that is what we see right the way through in the life of Jesus Christ. And even at this point of death, he was obedient to God. And that is something that we need to bear in our hearts and minds of being obedient to God. We obey God in our lives. It is not for one occasion or one stage of our lives, obedience right the way through in our lives. That is some consistency that we see in the life of Jesus Christ. Now, the situation is charged with emotions. People's expectation was different because this is our King, this is our Messiah, and this is the one who is going to deliver us from all the powers, all the foreign powers, that the future for us is going to be different and so on. But Jesus' mind was completely different and his purpose was completely different. In John's gospel, we can find, John tells us very clearly, as the chief priests asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus acknowledges that, not in direct language, but in indirect language, he says, yes, you are correct. What you say is correct, but I am not of this world. If I were the king of this world, my servants would have come and fought you and freed me from the hands of the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this world. It is different. And that is what we need to think about. The people were ready to do whatever they wanted. 
But Jesus was talking about something else. He was talking about God's kingdom. He's talking about God's justice, God's peace for the people that is awaiting them. And that reminds me of something that happened many, many years ago, 30 odd years ago, when Nelson Mandela was released from prison. People gathered together in Johannesburg to give him the best of welcome that they could give, something that they have been waiting for all their lives. That particular generation gathered together and the motorcade carrying Mandela was driven through the crowds all around the town. And Mandela was accepting the adulation of the people. And when his time to talk came, Mandela quietly, gently, but clearly said these words. Everybody was looking at him, what he might say. They were prepared to do whatever, the, whatever he, he would say to them. But he said, my fellow South Africans, I greet you in the name of peace. This is what he said, and that is history. It could have been a bloodbath if he said, well, time has come for us to take revenge. But instead, he talked about peace. And this is what Jesus Christ is also saying. If I were the king of this world, my servants, all these followers, all those who are shouting Hosanna, Hosanna, would turn against you. But my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is of God. And that is full of justice and peace and goodwill. And this is something that we remember today of why Jesus Christ came into this world, why he has to live and die and had to endure all these difficult things in his life when there was a better way of living was offered to him all the way through. And then we are invited on this occasion to think about our own lives. I mentioned that being a little journey. Sometimes it's a long journey. People sometimes say, well, things are not ending. It still continues with our, uh, in our lives. Things that are difficult to carry are still being there. People say it's a long, long journey for us. However long or short the journey is, Jesus, through his life, is telling us one important truth. There is the Hosanna for him now. And then the next moment, it is crucify him. The way they accepted him was great. But at the same time, they refused him and rejected him. Acceptance and rejection was part and parcel of the life of Jesus Christ. We have experienced so many things in our lives and nothing that Jesus hasn't experienced in our lives that we do experience. But he has been obedient to the will of God till the end of his life. And today on this Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, we remember and remind ourselves of the examples that Jesus Christ said before us. He was obedient, not just once, not just on that occasion, but right the way through his life. And we live a life of obedience. So what we may think as not desirable for us at this stage will be removed. And God will lift us above our own situation and circumstances. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow and we do that because he humbled himself and stayed obedient to God till the end. And our obedience will exalt us and liberate us from all the troubles and difficulties that we see. God will grant us peace 
and his love is there for us always. Amen. Thanks be to God. We sing our next hymn, Thou Didst Leave Thy Throne. In Christ, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through his blood which was shed on the cross. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us turn around and share in signs and symbols the peace of the Lord with um, those who are around you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessing and praise belong to you, gracious and eternal God. Through your living word, you created all things, the majesty of the heavens and the glory of the earth. In your wisdom and goodness, you have made all people in your image and likeness. Therefore, with saints and angels and with all creation, we lift up our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, power and Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God. We give you thanks and praise that in the fullness of time you gave your only son to share our human nature and to be tempted in every way as we are yet without sin, to set his face resolutely towards Jerusalem and to be lifted high upon the cross that he might draw all creation to himself. When the hour of his glory came, and loving his own to the end, he sat with them at supper, took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, Drink from this all of you. This is my new blood in the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. In obedience to his command, we call his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension. And we look for his coming in glory. Send your Holy Spirit. That these gifts of bread and wine may be for us. The body and blood of Christ. In union with Christ's offering for us. We offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice. Unite us in love and peace with all your people. Until with the whole company of heaven, we are brought into the presence of your eternal glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours. bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Christ is the bread of life. The cup we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Christ now please be seated. We join in the prayer of humble access. We say together, Lord, we come to your table 
trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own, we are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. Come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come not to declare that you are righteous, but that you desire to be true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in your frailty and sin, you stand in constant need of heaven's help and mercy. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Having been fed and nourished with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, let us rise from this table with the affirmation of our God who is with us and for us always, who gives us his love, his grace, and his peace. Therefore, go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ.
Christ keep you in eternal life? The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. This is our holy food, the food that gives us nourishment and sustenance in our journey with God, God who is always with us and for us, who gives us his love, his grace, and his peace. Therefore, go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. As we go from this table, let us remind ourselves of the words of St. Paul, who said, when we have God with us, what shall we fear? We have God with us and for us always, who gives us his love, his grace, and his peace. Therefore, go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Join in saying the final prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we thank you that you have nourished us with the bread of life and with the cup of salvation. May we who have received this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises live in your glory. And we who have known the greatness of your love, see you face to face in your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now come to a time of prayers. Let us pray for our own individual needs and the needs of those whom we know and love. Let us pray. Father most holy, we come into your presence now, opening our hearts and minds to you.
with a full understanding of your openness to listen to us, Father. We thank you for this time together that we were able to worship you in fellowship with one another and to be able to remind ourselves once again of the life and time and the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and through his life, setting examples for our own lives of being obedient to you till the end of his life. So, Father, we thank you and praise you and pray that you will continue to give us, Father, the strength, the courage, the hope and confidence in you that in our own lives too, no matter what our circumstances or situation or what we go through or experience, that we will stay firm and resolutely like Jesus Christ, our Lord, totally obedient to you, Father, till the end. We pray that you will continue to feed us and nourish us, Father, through your Holy Spirit, that our faith, that our understanding of you and our own lives would be fashioned and changed by your constant nourishment, Father, through your words. Loving God, we pray for one another, everyone who is present here and those who are joining us um, through uh, the live streaming, everyone, Father, we bring into your presence. And also we want to pray for our wider church family, everyone connected with our church. And pray, Father, that you will continue to keep us and bless us giving us always the awareness of your presence in our lives, Father, that we can continue to walk on our journey with you, with the understanding that you are going before us, behind us and besides us, that you surround our lives always with your peace and presence. We pray for our families, Father, far and near, wherever they are, we pray that you will keep them and bless them too, Father, giving them a sense of your closeness in their lives, that they will understand that you are with them and for them. We pray especially for the younger members of our families, those who are growing up. Loving God, we pray that you will bless them in such a way that they will grow up with the knowledge and understanding of your love and grace that is there for them always. We pray for our families and friends and everyone we know and love, and especially those who are not well at the moment, Father, and particularly for our church family, we pray those who are elderly and housebound, those um, movement and mobility is limited. Father, we pray that you will fill their lives with your presence, Father, that they will be comforted and supported by the knowledge that you are with them always. And praying, Father, for Carol especially as she um, recovers from her surgery. We thank you, Father, for your um, curing hands, your saving hands upon her father, that through uh, the care that she is receiving, that she would be made well, we pray. And we pray for Dorothy father, Dorothy Webster, um, and uh, many other members of our church family who are um, elderly and too frail to be able to come to church anymore. We pray that you will continue to give them your peace and your comfort that through their lives, they have served you, Father, and that, that service has touched our own lives too. And that you will give them that knowledge and understanding that you are with them always. We pray for our world, Father. We pray that you will um, speak in the hearts and minds of those who have power and authority over the nations of this world, particularly we remember Ukraine and the plight of the people, Father, how hard it is to imagine, even to imagine what they are going through so that 
the ground situation is beyond our understanding but father we pray that you will bring about peace and stability in that country very soon father that through all the efforts that leaders of the nations are making there will be an end to the war and uh, peace keeping and peace building would flourish in that land once again we pray for um, other parts of the world father where economy is badly affected and particularly remembering sri lanka and um, the plight of the people without money without food without medicine without electricity without um, all the basic facilities that is needed for them because of the country going bankrupt father we pray that soon there would be change brought about in that country too and there are many other places we want to pray for father where our people are crying out to you for food and medicine and um, and um, stability in their lives and peace father we pray that you will prevail yourself among those people and help them by your grace to put all your trust and hope on you father we pray and we pray for the remainder of um, this season of this holy season of lent father and as we go through um, this time into the holy week we pray that you will continue to help us and feed us and nourish us father through your spirit for um, our own um, spiritual living father that you will make us stronger and stronger for christ and that you will continue to transform our lives that our lives would be based on obedience to your word and your will father and our father we want to say a little prayer over the palm crosses that we have and pray father that you will bless these crosses and those people who have made them for us that these palm crosses will serve as a sign and as a token of the presence of Christ in our lives and that that will point us to his life his death and his resurrection and his active presence among us every moment of our lives so father we pray that you will continue to bless us and keep us in jesus name we pray amen and we all join in saying the lord's prayer together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen our final hymn is i will sing the wondrous story
Now we join in the Lent responses. Where Christ walks, we are Christ stumbles. We are Christ cries. We are Christ suffers. We are Christ dies. When Christ rises again in glory, there is no other way. The God of grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, make us perfect, confirming and strengthening us, and to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Your safety was yeah.